Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishingNetwork.com and today we're going to be talking about bass fishing baits. But first and foremost, let's get to the best topic of all. Yesterday, the Boston Red Sox won the World Series at LA. It was a great, great series. That one game that went to 18 innings, a little bit long. I didn't stay up. I went to bed around, you know, one o'clock, like a semi-normal person would. But I tried my best, but man, it was long. So back to bass fishing baits. Now, when I'm gonna talk about bass fishing baits, I'm talking about live bait. And there are a variety of baits you can use for fishing bass, for bass fishing. Um, and many of them, maybe you haven't tried or thought about, or they're just not really available. And you're not, not that type of person that likes to go out and catch your own bait. So one of them, everybody knows, it's a worm. They're everywhere, they're in your yard, they're in the fields, they're in the gardens, they're next to the water, they're in the streets when it gets wet, they start, they start drowning and they come up. And that's when the old uh, early morning bird comes out and gets the early worm and has a great meal. But you can also collect them that way yourself. And this, really no great name for them. They're called earthworms if they're in your normal neighborhood and they work pretty well. You know, the fish sees a worm, it's gonna eat it. But there are other types. One of the others which you can actually get either online or in your local fishing store will be night crawlers. They, um, they're more of a, you know, nocturnal kind of a worm. They come out and go closer to the surface when it's, when it's darker outside and for all intents and purposes, they aren't really that much different. They're a little bit bigger, per se. You can, they do, they are around your local area, but you'll have a hard time actually finding them unless you know how to dig, and you know what the difference is between an earthworm and a night crawler. Night crawlers are more toward, I believe, the uh, the northern states up here in Boston and up into Canada, but you can get them online. You can get them at your local store, Walmart. Um, at um, your bait shop, they, they got most things, particularly worms. And after that, you have um, your European worms, which I kind of like because they're big and fat and they're really long as well, which makes more bait for you. So if you're fishing for like smaller bass and you want to actually conserve like how many worms you uh, want to use, cause you know, they, they aren't cheap. You can slice that puppy up into four, maybe five little pieces and get a nice sized bass off each one. But if you want the big the big boy, you always know you have to go to the bigger baits and you also have to go to the bigger live baits. So you have to kind of call the other fish. Calling means, you know, by going bigger or out of their size range, they can't actually eat it. They'll nip at it, they'll they'll peck at it, but they won't actually will consume it. So you won't actually get them on a hook. Therefore, when the big boy comes in and suck the whole thing in, that's the one you'll catch. So it makes it a little easier for you, but you know, Little tiny fish pecking at your, your line really kind of make you a little angry piss you off a little bit like get away you little punks i'm trying for the big boy the lunker um there's another new technique which is if you don't want to pay for worms you can actually start your own little um composting bin slash compartment they have trays and at each level you put in different types of uh of uh, food items and there's a worm that's really good at comp composting things and it's called a red wiggler. That's what it's called online. You can get it on Amazon. You, sometimes you can get it at a local bait shop, but not really. And any place that sells like composting, like a, a Home Depot or a Lowe's, may or may not have it. But I, I don't think they actually carry it too often. Not really. They carry the food, the um, their little rock pebbles that the um, the worms need to eat with the, the composted food that comes down, which helps them digest. They don't really have that great or really any digestive system. They consume stuff and it goes down the pipe and goes out the other side. So when they eat little microscopic pebbles along with the food, they're, they're able to break it down and that comes out and adds with some other stuff and becomes compost. Highly concentrated nutritional dirt for your gardening purposes. Now if you're not if you're not into gardening then whatever. Red regulars are kind of skinny, they're small. You can get them in the eggs, you can grow them, they'll just, you'll get more and more and more. And you know, if one worm isn't enough, use two, use three. It doesn't really matter. 
it's still a big old worm where you put it all on one hook. So that's an option. Also, there's a there's bud worms, which in the past I used to think were the greatest thing. I like when you hook it, all the blood comes out. I'm like, oh man, these fish are gonna be on it like a shark. They're gonna smell all that blood in the in the water, the blood trail, and be able to follow it straight to my worm, which does happen. That actually does happen if you actually leave your worm in there long enough. But usually a blood worm is gonna be found pretty quick by probably a, a smaller fish and it's gonna go to waste for for a while so unless you have the money to spend and you have them readily available sometimes they run out because I'm not sure how you breed a blood worm or where they're actually found it's kind of kind of weird I honestly but uh but that's for you, cool. They aren't too bad to handle because they do bite things, but not you. They, their mouths aren't big enough. But one th worm that I can bite you is a sea worm. It has pincers, it's big, it's hairy, and it can bite you, and it will hurt. It's kind of like a centipede biting you. But that's for the sea. If you want to catch a, um, oh, what am I, lose my mind here. Fluke, i.e. flounder, or even some smaller striped bass, Sea worms where you gotta go. Nice sandy flat bottoms, kind of like where it is out in Gloucester, and also near Quincy, which is north, just north and just south of the Boston Harbor, or I, honestly, the Boston Harbor itself. But like the northern and the southern part of the Boston Harbor are there's nice little flats there, and the fluke, summer fluke and the winter fluke, love it. And I honestly haven't got out, out there because I haven't got my porta boat yet. I need a porta boat because it's portable. I don't have any parking space to put a real boat and I need to be able to pull inside so that nobody steals it and the weather and the environments don't destroy it, which is clearly states don't leave this thing outside. It might not work so well after the winter, especially around here. So that's my reason for wanting to get that. And inflatables are great too. I'm, I'm honestly thinking about just getting the inflatable, even though it's almost winter time. I, I made a decision I wanted to get out there and I just don't want to spend the money, but I'm like, oh man, if I get the porta boat, I won't need the other boat. But what's wrong with having two boats? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with having two boats. It's awesome. Go do it. Um, another great bait, another great bass fish you made is uh, something that's more or less found down south, Georgia, Florida. The, the southern states around Texas and Alabama and Mississippi and all that stuff. It's called the Golden Shiner. It is the number one bait fish down there. And you can catch it yourself. It's pretty cool. They school around the, the weeds and the forward uh, and the, uh, the, the uh, structure and stuff. And you can pull them out by just giving them some food. A little hunks of little bread, like you're feeding a, a duck or something. Some, some dog food, cat food, some like cornmeal really anything that they see stuff floating on top of the water they want to eat it and you can they actually have baits or like kind of um kind of like when you're you're chumming out in the sea you can drop it there leave it for a couple hours maybe even half a day they'll collect and then you can throw your your casting net over top of them and gather them up because honestly for if you were like a guide down there fishing you're gonna need like 50 of them per per person because the fish are going to be lighting those things up. Doesn't matter what year it is. I just heard a huge lightning bolt. I thought it was sunny because it looks nice and blue over here, but over here, it ain't nice. So it looks like I'm going to get wet on the way back to the office, but I'm going to keep this video going. I got my list here of things I want to talk about. I'm going to get this done and hopefully a lightning bolt won't strike me down. So about the golden shiner they they do have those you can cast them into the net over it but you can also use the um they have like uh traps kind of like a lobster trap and you can use that and actually put the stuff in there and they'll actually capture them capture the emit in it and then you can just pull them up and then boom you, you got them you can make sure you have them aerated and another great thing is a shad and one of the most popular types is a thread fin shad and they've gotten really popular oh now it's now it's raining great uh and those are more southern fish as well. And you can use those to fish as well. 
not too many of them are up here really this is more of a minnow and herring area up in the northern areas because both of those fish don't like the cold so when you go down south below I'd say North Carolina South Carolina look for your golden shiner and look for your shad I'm actually gonna no I'm gonna keep going I'm just gonna get wet uh, next is crayfish. Crayfish are awesome. They're actually around here. They're down my place in Virginia. They're down south. They're down everywhere. And when they're readily available, a bass will eat them about 80% of the time. It will be 80% of their actual their meal. If they can find them, they're easy to catch. And when they're not easy to catch because they're a smaller, uh, it's a smaller bass, one to three pounds, they'll actually nip off the claws first so they don't get, you know, clawed. Just the same way we put the rubber bands over them. And then they'll eat it when it's totally defenseless. They're, they're slow and they're nutritious. Um, around here is the herring. I'm gonna start walking because it's obviously gonna be better if I'm halfway back to my job when I get soaked rather than no uh, actual um, advancing at all. So the next thing is um, herrings around here. There's runs. There's, there's a run in the spring around May there's another run in the fall that's much smaller which most people don't really recognize and the bass don't actually the striped bass don't actually follow them during the spring run is the the blueback herring and that uh run actually happens by the millions they're everywhere they're flipping they're jumping everywhere it's it's freaking crazy and the striped bass actually follows them in and they're just lighting them up everywhere they go all the way down to my house where the dam is and boom i can actually walk down the street and possibly catch a 30 pound striped bass. I only say that because somebody else did it not but two years ago. And I was like, dude, night fishing. Oh my God, it was right here. I could have been striper fishing almost at my house. And I'm not even on the sea. Sometimes you don't have to be, you don't have to be a waterside uh, living to have that kind of life. Sometimes it's just, just down the street. Just get near a body of water that has fish in it and something will happen, especially if you do your research and figure out what's happening in your neighborhood. That's why it's great to make um, relationships with people around you. Talk to the fishing shop people, talk to all the people who sell all the fish, all fishing gear, the manufacturers, the repair people, the boat people, the charter people, and maybe some of them will, will want to keep their secrets and not tell you jack. That's a lot of people. And other people will be very free. Oh, dude, I was over here, I was over there. They're biting during this time. This is when they run. You want to be over here when that's happening. Sometimes people like to be in your property, but you can go over to this spot to make that happen. And that's great information to know. So here's where we get to the weird stuff. One, panfish, bluegills, sunbream, pumpkin seed. Yes, there are bass that eat those too. Sometimes in the south, when the bass get really big, I'm talking like five pounds, they'll start chasing those bluegills around. And not because, not because they're actually eating their eggs, because they're actually trying to eat them. They're hungry. And when that hunger starts, they're gonna start chasing just about everything that's smaller than them, even their own species. That's why people love bass, they, they don't care. You look smaller than me, you're going in my mouth. Oh, pretty cool. Makes it fishing a lot easier and more fun. Uh, around here, I've actually seen eels being eaten by the longtime bass, and the cormorant is like a weird, slimy kind of uh, stork bird, stork like bird that dives underwater into the weeds and the grass and the structure. And I saw one come up with like a, a two foot long eel, it was huge, and then he just slurped that thing down like it was oodles and noodles. But that was pretty cool. But I've learned that the bass will actually, actually eat those too, and they will obviously make you catch bigger bass. You'll have to fish them off of structure that's deeper with the deep drops or near the bridge abutments to find this kind of bass. But if you're able to make it happen, you can get some nice fish. You can get some nice fish. Or you might actually just run into a striped bass and have that kind of fun too around here. But that depends on where you are. If you're down south in those big like Lake Galveston lakes, whew, you gotta get yourself a big one. They might eels might not even be native to that area and they'll still eat it anyway thinking it's a gigantic worm try it out also there's crickets crickets are a line you know they're small for panfish but bass eat those too i'm not going to go too much into those you can get them online you can get them at your local bait shop 
We can get them dead, we can get them alive. Alive is better. How do you hook them? I don't really know. Hook them however you can without them falling apart. Sorry, that's a uh, sterile drive here. Uh, and the last one, the last one is a frog. Now, why do I say use a frog for, for, for a bass fishing bait? Well, I have a small story. I was about, I don't know, nine years old. I was living in Virginia. We had a little lake near us. And one day I was walking down the road and I saw a frog on the road. But it wasn't alive, it was dead. It hadn't been smashed. It looked like it just got hit or something. And it just croaked and I was like, I'm going fishing. What if I just put this puppy on a hook and threw it out there? It was a really small frog, it was a younger one. Probably about, I don't know, three to four inches long. But man, I threw that thing over a lily pad and those bass lit it up. Boom! I caught it like a, I think it was a four or five pounder. But he actually, he, he managed to actually swallow half the frog. I couldn't get it out, so I just let him have it. And that was that. I mean, it was fantastic. I was like, whoa, maybe people should breed frogs and sell those for live bait as well, or at least try it out. I don't know how to, you can make that happen, but that would be pretty cool. But it's not really a normal thing that you can do. So that's all I have for today. I don't really have anything else I want to talk about for live bait fishing, so... This is Dwight Norris of uh, Fish Network. If you can go to the website and check all my other stuff out, you can go to YouTube channel and subscribe right down below. Write comments that you wanna say about this video or other videos I've made or expectations. And maybe just say that, Dwight, you should find a quieter place to do your videos. That'll be in my house. But sometimes you just like being out here. You're like, hey, I'm out here. I was at the river. I'm making a video. Now I'm leaving the river. Now it's raining. Now it's not raining. Now the sun's out. Now it's raining again. What's going on? I don't know. Whether it's nasty, it's not nasty. I thought it was the end. That's what Weather Channel said. And oh yes, this is the end of this video. Have a great time and get fishing.